Okay. Good evening. So today I'll be analyzing uh, bank churn data. And the objective of this analysis is to basically determine whether a customer uh, in the bank's credit card services will either leave the service or stay with the service based on a number of variables. So let's get started. Uh, the libraries and packages that will be used or that I used in the analysis in general uh, is CARAT, which is classification and uh, regression training, as well as uh, some statistical methods, uh, partitioning methods, things of that nature. R part uh, for partitioning and data processing, as well as regression methods. R part plot, which is for the same thing, uh, R minor. Uh, in net for neural networks, which is will one of the models we'll be using. ggplot for visualization purposes. Amelia for uh, missing values. Um, CA tools for other moving statistics. It's very important as well. And dummies, uh, which allows uh, me to, to convert um, factor variables to dummy variables very fast. So I'll run those immediately. Next, I'll run a random seed, and this will allow anybody who runs the script to receive the same results uh, and reproduce the results I did. So I'll run that as well. And then next, I'll just import the data set, which is a bank data churn, bank churn data set, which is a CSV file. I will use the, uh, the function uh, read.csv and the uh, assigned it to the data churn dot data. So next will be our data expiration. Um, the first thing that we need to do is we need to find out what the data looks like, uh, get a uh, descriptive statistics of all of the variables uh, and see and verify if the data needs cleaning or not because we can't do any analysis on bad data per se. So I'll run the structure of churn data just to see how everything goes. And then here we can see we have 240,000 uh, observations and 14 variables. Um, everything looks fine. Only thing that we need to worry about during this analysis is the factor of variables other than churn, which is our target variable. Um, so we need um, gender, uh, marital status, and group. We need to change those into dummy variables. And that's where our dummies uh, package will come into play, which is good as well. Um, so then I'll run a summary to see what the data looks like as well. Um, and this is initially to see if we have any missing values, because if you do it, a show here, like if we had a missing values for gender, uh, a blank would show up here and then it would be a bunch of numbers. So you can see that here. Gender has two levels, which is fine. Uh, churn is, as we've seen, is an integer um, here in R, um, but I'll keep it that way for our analysis, even though it is a factor and has two levels, uh, zero and one, zero for no churn and one for churn, um, but we'll keep it that way. So the next, uh, I'll, next I'll use the mismap uh, function from the Amelia data set in order to figure out uh, the missing values. And because we have 240,000 values, I already ran it because it takes a little while. So we'll have the, uh, after I run it, I uh, if we had any missing data, we would it would come up red. Uh, this is just merely all of the occupations um, because there's so many occupations and they're so large that there is too much for um, the ggplot to handle or the mismap to handle. So it just does it like that. But you can see here in the key that 0% uh, is missing and 100% of the data is uh, is observed. So um, we have a pretty clean data set, which is very, very good. So the next thing we'll do is uh, one thing I wanted to figure out, if churn is our, our, uh, our target variable, we need to see what it looks like, um, how many people are churning as opposed to not churning currently. So I'll run that. And blue is for not churning, which is the customers who are staying with the service. And then red is the churn. So 
Um, this is a good way to look at it to see uh, that there is an overwhelming proportion of people who are staying with the service as opposed to people who are leaving. But banks, um, they want to minimize this number because they want to uh, retain all the service and all the business that they can. So the next thing I wanted to do was uh, I wanted to look at the age, um, the average age, or and as well as um, a histogram using ggplot uh, package to see what it looks like, to get a visualization of, of the ages of people who are using the data or are using the, the service, the credit card service. And we can see an overwhelming amount of people uh, of age 38, and I'll run it here. I just know it offhand. Uh, 38, and I ran it already. Uh, 38 are um, people of age 38 are pretty much majority of the customers, and this is important to know because you want to know majority of your customer base whenever you're uh, whenever you're in business in general. So uh, what what the bank can do is they can you know kind of either let these people you know be. Or uh, what might be very uh, a good idea is to keep or try to do things to keep people of this age because they know that this is their primary customer base. So uh, that that's definitely good to know the average age of the people who are in service at the bank. The next thing I want to know is the average age of account and see how the spread of the age of accounts look. So I'll run that. And we can see that, wow, that's overwhelming as well, which is about 30. Uh, we can see here that it says 33. I already ran it as well. Uh, 33 is the average age of account, which is just under three years. Um, so the bank also knows that, okay, the average uh, number of accounts here are people who have been here for just under three years, which is also good to know. Um, another thing that I wanted to know, just to get a feel for the data, was the occupations and how the customers in different occupations, um, how they made up the uh, most of the data set um, for bank churn. So I run that as well. And we can see that other is very important to uh, to the, the data set. Um, manufacturing comes in third. Uh, trade occupations come in second with the most... Uh, amount of people who hold the bank services. So that might be good to know. I think this number might be overwhelming due to uh, them not be able to, being able to categorize people into these specific uh, occupations. So uh, I think that was all good information to know. So now we're getting to our model building after we get a good idea of the data. And the first model that we want to build is the, our logistic regression because we want to know whether it's zero or one, but we also want to have a probability of whether or not these people are going to go with leaving or staying. So what we needed to do and what I said before is the uh, factors other than the churn data, uh, they needed to be converted to dummy variables in order for us to use them in logistic and classification models. So I'll just run that in order to change these over to dummy variables. And then what I'll, did, what I'll do is I'll combine these uh, new dummy variables column-wise to the original data, call that churn data cleaned, and then I'll keep only the columns that I need in the data set, which is erasing the, the columns uh, that held the, the factor levels before for marital occupation uh, and gender, and I'll replace them with these new dummy variables in the data set. So I'll run that. And then next, um, what I also need to do is run the data partition. So whenever you're analyzing data, you also want to separate the data uh, into a training data set and a testing data set in order uh, so that your model doesn't overfit and so that it can be receptive to new data and uh, it can analyze new data just as fresh as it can before because models can get used to uh, data. So I run that um, and data partition of data. So the first model that we run in, one in, uh, run is a logistic regression. And the logistic regression is just basically predicting uh, whether each customer is gonna be a zero or a one based on a probability um, of the variables in the data set. So 
I'll do that and then I'll run a summary so we can get a look at the most important variables for analyzing the data. So we can see here that we have uh, customer ID, um, interest paid, cash advances, balance transfer, age of accounts, age, uh, which is very important because we analyze these. So we see now that, of course, in this, well, in, in this logistic regression that they're very significant, especially at the 95% significance level, which is pretty good. Customer value, and we, we don't see any problems there, which is very, very, very good. And we also see uh, occupations like medical, other uh, services, and trade. Uh, they are especially important when predicting churn. So now we're going to move on to our prediction using the predict uh, function. And then we're going to predict and then we're going to generate a rock curve in order to determine the cutoff points so that we can categorize or classify each instance as a zero or a one. So I did that and that should generate a rock curve and it says our optimal cutoff is 0.7225, which I'll do. And uh, you can see here, and uh, if it's a if the churn prediction is greater than 0.7225, then it's going to be a one for churn, and if it's less than that, then it's going to be a zero. So we're going to classify those. We're going to run those, and then we're going to transform the factors, uh, transform these into factors for comparison, so that we can turn them into a confusion matrix. Um, and the reason why we want to turn these into a confusion matrix is because our data or our model comparison is based on the criteria of the misclassification rate. We want to know whether our models are classifying each of the rows of data into a zero or a one accurately. So that's why this is important. And that will be the main criteria for each of our models as we go along. So we can see that our model here has a 93.53% accuracy, which is uh, not bad at all. Um, we actually like uh, that because that gives us a misclassification rate of about 6.47. So um, as it's the first model, that's in the, the running for uh, the implementation model. And the model with the lowest class misclassification rate will be the model that will be implemented. So the next model that we will use is the neural network. And a neural network is good uh, for modeling nonlinear relationships. It's a machine learning method. Um, and it's good because it takes inputs and then it matches those with outputs in ways that uh, we you know, really can't, I, I don't wanna say fathom, but in ways that, that aren't linear. And a lot of relationships aren't linear. So it's good for us to, to just, um, use methods like this um, in order to do predictions. So then we're going to gain a summary of the model as well. And then we have our summary here, and this gives us the values in the standard error. Um, but uh, none of that really is really that important. Um, we just want to do a prediction. And I can't use the confusion matrix because uh, the the NN net, um, the NN net uh, package won't let me. And, and we use the multi-nominal uh, logistic regression neural network um, to do that. And that's from the internet um, package. So what we'll do is we'll use the prediction, we'll uh, turn the prediction uh, using the test data, and then we'll turn that into a table um, using our model and then predicting the churn, and then we'll turn that into a, a table. So we have our confusion matrix, which is here. And uh, we can either calculate the misclassification rate and the, the classification uh, rate um, good uh, but using this, or we can do it another way. And I just did it this way because it's easier. So the first one, uh, the correct classification, which basically sums a diagonal, uh, which is this. It classified 57,388 as no churn correctly and it classified 19 as churn correctly. But it misclassified people who stayed with the business as churning. Uh, it misclassified those 3,950 times, but that doesn't give us our misclassification rate. So we're gonna look at that. And that gives us a classification rate of 93.54, which is 
pretty much on par with our logistic regression model. And then we have a misclassification rate of uh, 0.0645, which is 6.45, um, which is a little bit worse or bad than our logistic regression model. So right now, the logistic regression model is in the lead. And then next, our third model, for the sake of time, will be uh, our, our decision tree. And decision trees are good because they group segments of data based on uh, probabilities. But I will not be using the data uh, cleaning and the, the data um, sets that we used before. I'll use the same data set, but I'll just clean it differently. Um, so I'll run that for the neural network, I mean, for the decision tree, uh, so we can start all over. And then uh, I turned, I, or I actually added uh, the churn, um, I added the factor variable, which is churn, to the data set, um, which is, it will actually have 15 variables. And as you can see here, data... Uh, data has 15 variables, 245,000 uh, observations and 15 variables, which is good. So then I'll partition the data in a different way than I did before in order for it to work with the decision tree. And then I'll build the decision tree using the R part, uh, the R part um, package. So the R part package will uh, be ran and then I'll analyze and see uh, the summary of the decision tree. Um, the R part package uses all of the variables in order to tell which variables are most important. So this is our decision tree model. And it tells us that these models are most important. And age of account in months seems like it's very important in every model. But here in the decision tree model, it seems like it's very important. Um, so even though this is a model, uh, this doesn't do well for visualization. Humans need visualization. So, and executives need visualization. So I'll run the R part, uh, R part plot package in order for us to see the decision tree. And we can see here that after 11 months, uh, a lot of the customers choose to stay. However, within that first year, uh, customers leave uh if it's if an age of account is less than 11 months most of the people actually uh, leave so the bank can use this information to uh you know do a bunch of campaigns during the first year a customer is with them credit card customer in order to retain them and this is very important information to know as well so we'll do a prediction and then we'll also do a confusion matrix on the training data set and this shows us that the decision tree is actually uh, better than both of the previous models with 94.73% accuracy, which is very good for the data set. Um, and that has a very small misclassification rate, about 5.3, I believe. Um, uh, about 5. Yeah, 27, to be correct. Um, so the next thing that I'll do is I'll just uh, rerun the entire thing over with the uh, test data set and see if we get uh, pretty much the same thing, which is good. Yes, and we got 94.77. So it looks like the decision tree model is the model of choice in this analysis. And banks can use the decision tree model in order to identify and classify uh, customers who are willing to stay with the business or leave the business. Thank you.